What's good, y'all? 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 Good morning, y'all. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to a new year, new video. I wanted to record an intro because I feel like whenever I do piercing videos, they don't really have a lot of context and you just see me in pain. So to, right now, I'm at the laundry mat doing laundry because I'm leaving later tonight and like around midnight. And I'm going to get uh, two Helix piercings on my ears at one of my favorite tattoo shops is Southern Boys if you're in Houston Southern Boys or Southern Brothers it's right next to what used to be like the mattress thing but yeah it's pretty cool if you're still here thanks for bearing with me through this intro hey everyone welcome to the voiceover if you're wondering what the shot of the captive bead rings are uh, I was talking to the piercer about what size they are because I've gotten I've got 20 20 G on my nostrils and then 16 G in my septum and I wanted to know what size they were Typically, the thicker the needle is, the more it's going to hurt. If you're wondering why I looked so, like, zoned out and, like, hyper-focused on a corner, is that, uh, this was, like, the most intense pain I've ever felt, uh, piercing-wise. I've gotten, uh, I actually got two on each ear, so that's four times I get stabbed and four times I feel that pinch. In terms of, uh, what, like, what you feel, for myself, 16-gauge needle, it was a sharp pain as the needle goes through. He didn't use any clamps. If you do, if... Your piercer does use the clamps. I would ask if they have a silicone tube or if they can just freehand it because the clamps do make it hurt more. Uh, yeah, so you feel that intense pain from the needle and then you feel a uh, super sharp pinch and that's the captive bead ring going in and then him pinching it closed. Um, yeah, so that's why I kind of look a little, little, just, just a little, you know, frazzled out of mind, out of body, basically. As far as uh, aftercare goes, all you do basically is you just wash it with uh, antibacterial soap and then you can put a super moisturizing cream on. Most piercers recommend A&D, but as long as it's like uh, non-comonogenic and it's non-scented, you can totally like use it on your ears. If you're also wondering what's going on where like me and the piercer are like laughing at each other and he's like pulling me towards him, it's because I was like pulling away because of the pain and he's like, you can't do that, don't do that. And then also my hair was in the way, so... If you have thick hair like me and you have a big mop, uh, help your piercer help you and get it out of the way. Don't be like me. But yeah, in this clip, he actually has to put the needle in again because it wasn't uh, it wasn't lining up right because of my hair. So yeah, don't be like me. Help your piercer help you and make it less painless because this one definitely hurt. It bled a little bit, as you can see right now, as far as healing. um, I just have scabs going on and it's still a dull pain. And then it, go it goes basically from a dull three to a sharp six if you bump it on something. Like I was on the bus and I accidentally slammed my ear into the seat and that hurt a lot. But yeah, uh, enjoy the rest of the video. I'll put some music in. Uh, thanks for listening to me ramble.
two, three, four. 